Okay, so this week uh, we will try to create design our own functions and um, that in Python. Uh, so function, functions just are um, groups of the piece of Python code that can help you to uh, resolve the questions, uh, similar questions. So you can use reuse those uh, piece of Python code that to resolve those uh, similar questions. All right, so first let's go to our local repository and also let's upload our local repository and that is update. And uh, let's create our new Python file. So this is lab8.py. And let's add a few um, a command. So lab8 functions. OK, uh, so our first uh, question, question is that we want to define a function that to count the number of the words in the string. So, okay, so as we said, so we can uh, design functions uh, following multiple steps. So let's say we define a function we call count words, and that need to require an argument. So for this one, we call it input string. Okay. And let's so let's first let's just return that input string. Okay, so let's do it very very simple, and let's try it. Print um, count words, and here let's say uh, a string. Okay, uh, so now you can see. Uh, so let's design, let's define the functions step by step. So, okay, so here we can see we do have the string. So here we define a function. We have the function name. Uh, we have one argument because one argument will be enough for this question. And we retain that output. And now we are calling that function and uh, it is not working. Okay, and so if you remember that uh, we have, uh, we did the same uh, questions previously. So if you remember that, so to count the words in a string, so first we need to convert that word into a list. Okay, and next we will need to use a length function to count the number of the items in a list. Okay, so to split the string into a list, we use the split function, the split method. Okay, so let's say we want to return a split string. So now let's write. Okay, so now we have a, a list. Okay, and next, we, so we can apply, uh, we can use that list and we can use the length function, len function to count the number of items in that uh, string, in that list, and that will give us the number of the words in a string. So let's apply that. L-E-N. Okay, and now that's tried. Okay, the number is two. So it looks like it's work. So let's say, uh, write them all. This is a string. Okay, the result is number four. Okay, so now it looks like it is working. Great, so let's comment out this test. And let's go to 3.2. So 3.2 is that asking that test your, your function with a, with a demo string, which is hello world. So let's say demo string equals hello world. And let's try our count words function. demo string and see whether or not that will work. So the right answer should be two. Okay, it worked. Great. Uh, okay, uh, so now let's move on. So number 3.3 .3 is asking that we want to define a function that can find out the minimal number in the list with a for loop. Okay, so this is just a process for 3.1. This is a process that how we can develop a function uh, incrementally. 
Okay, so we test each single step and also use different variables. And we see the output. So and we finally uh, reach the solution that can resolve our function or resolve our uh, problem. Also, it is also very common that in another way that the way that we develop functions is that so uh, when we write some codes that in Python and we realize that we need to use those similar piece of code multiple times. So in that case, we can consider put those code into more genetic way so that we can develop a function. OK. OK, so here let's use that approach. So if you remember that in lecture six, we did an exercise that we used a for loop to find out the max the maximum num maximum number that within this list. OK, and actually we can copy and paste this um, piece of code into our function and also we can change that one a little bit uh, so that and can be used to find out the minimal number. So let's copy this one. OK, and here let's paste that code. So here there's a number list and also we see the maximum number is this one. And also we compare for each individual item number in this number. So if the number is great than the maximum number, we will remember that maximum number. OK, so this is an existing piece of code. So actually, so if you if we change that one into minimal number. OK, so we just need to compare. So if this minimal number, we compare each single number within this list. So if the list is smaller than the current minimal number and we reassign that value to this minimal number variable. And finally, if we print that minimal number, we will have the minimal number that we're, we are looking for. So now if we run it, so now in this case, you can see we do have find out this minimal number. And if we change that one to a slightly different results, let's see whether or not that can still work. Okay, it worked. OK, so next step is that we can just convert this piece of code into a more genetic uh, function. So let's say define find minimal. OK, so the input will be a number list. OK, so it can be working on any number of the list. And within that function so we will just keep everything at the same okay but we need to add the indentation okay and instead of print we just return okay so here we just develop our find minimal function and let's try it so print find minimal so let's say give it a very simple at least one, two, three, four. And let's see whether or not it worked. OK, it worked. OK, great. So let's keep that one as it now. And let's move on to next 3.4. So 3.4 is that to, to test the function that with this demo list. So let's see demo list equals. OK, so that is exactly <laughs> the list that we tested one two three four five six okay and let's say print <coughs> find minimal and here we want to use a demo list as a test and now if we run it okay it worked okay so that is uh 3.4 okay so 3.4 that worked and now let's go to 3.5. So here we have the mixed list. So in this mixed list, uh, we have strings and also we have values. So let's see mixed list equals one, two, three, four, and the string A. Okay, and a five and a six. And let's try 
use our function that in 3.3 to find minimal. Here we are using this mixed list and see whether or not we can that can work. Okay, so here we have errors and um, the error is that because we do have a string, okay, and so that when we make the comparisons, when we make the comparisons, so that will generate an error. Okay, um, okay, so I think it, this is also a great opportunity in that let's use debugging mode and to test to see that exactly that how the error um, cr being created. Uh, so let's add a breakpoint here. Uh, let's enable this debugging mode. Okay, and now let's run it. And here we are looking for the uh, the number and also the minimal item. So let's type number uh, and also minimal item. Okay. So now the uh, the Python code the Python has been stopped here. So we are going to call this function that you find out maximal list. So here we are going to use this one step into. So we want to run each uh, step that in Python. So now you can see uh, we go to this um, uh, function. So that minimal item equals the first item. And uh, for the number and also number list. So now we are in this uh, number and also number list. So actually this is where we should type the number and also minimal item. Okay, so right now the number is one and also minimal item is also one. And okay, that's fine. And next, um, the number is two, the minimal number is one, so which is also fine. And next, the number is three and also minimal number is also one. And number is four and also minimal number is also one. Right now we can see the number is string A. And we are going to execute this if statement. Okay. So this is where we have these errors. All right. OK, so now let's stop that. And let's remove this breakpoint. OK, so that is how we can use debugging to. So if the function is a, a little bit complicated, so we can use debugging to help us to run those functions step by step so that we can identify where the problem is and also we can try to resolve this problem. OK, so here we know that the error is because uh, we have a string here, but we are comparing the numbers with a string. OK, so how can we resolve that problem? Uh, you can pause the video here and also think about how we did that, how we resolve a similar problem in the lecture and also try it by ourselves first. OK, so here is my solution. So. Uh, so for this within this for loop, I will make, I will check the type the date type of the current number. I, I was if the type of the current number is not string, and I will continue uh, the comparison. Okay, so that will be able to uh, handle the scenario where we have strings in this list. Okay, so let's try it. So now you can see it worked. So it passed. Uh, if we have other items and numbers, it also worked in a scenario where if we have all the items and numbers or strings. Okay, so that is for this lab. Again, this fine we this function still cannot handle all the scenarios. So for example, if you have other data containers uh, in your list, so you may still have errors. But uh, hopefully you get the idea that how we can debug the functions and also how can we create functions from our previous uh, Python code. Okay, so now let's 
um, gate add all. So let's add all the Python code to GitHub. Commit dash m. So this is our function lab. And let's push that one. OK, uh, so this time I want to show you how that look like on GitHub. Uh, so now if we go to GitHub, and that is our um, the latest lab, so lab 8. So now because we have defined several functions, so on GitHub, uh, So on GitHub, you can jump to the functions. So if you, for example, this is a function, and this is also the find minimal function. Okay, so that is also a nice feature on GitHub. So that is easier for you to identify different uh, functions.